Hi, in this lecture, we're going to have a look at the DSA plugin. So this plugin I'm going to put after the channel EQ, and it's technically a Dynamics processor, so go down to Dynamics, and then choose DSA and Stereo. So what it really does is it compresses a certain band of frequencies. So we really want to lower the S sounds, or the T sounds, or the F sounds, because it can sound a little harsh on the microphone if it's too S-y. So the DSA really just gets rid of these S's or F's or T sounds. So we want to kind of reduce the sibilance. Essentially just the high end hiss produced from the S sounds. A lot of this also depends on the voice itself. So what kind of voice are you mixing? And it also depends on the placement of the microphone. If you're kind of at the side of the microphone slightly, it'll be less S-y than if you're directly in front of the microphone. So the placement can help with this as well. So if you do have a lot of S's, maybe consider having your microphone off at a slight angle and it should help with some of this sibilance. Also the distance will make a difference with the sibilance. If you're right up close, there may be more sibilance than if you're far away. Obviously you might not want to be too far away from the microphone though because you will capture some of the room sound which you don't really want for voiceovers or podcasts. You want quite a dry sound generally. So let's have a look at this DSA. We have a few different sections, the detector, the suppressor, the monitor, and the smoothing over here. We also have these visual graph displays as well. We also have a few different presets, but for this, I'm just going to go on recall default, and then let's work from here. So this detector over here, so this is basically what the DSA is going to detect. So this is basically the sibilance you're going to look for. And it's this graph here. So if we move it over, it will choose the certain frequencies, obviously lower on the left and going higher to the right. Generally, I'd have this above about 5 or 10k. You will have to use your ears. It depends on the voice you're mixing as well. And below this as well, we have the sensitivity. So the more you pull up the sensitivity, the more sounds will come through and will end up being suppressed. If you pull it down less, less sounds will be suppressed. So I'm gonna have it in the middle about halfway, but like I said, it really depends on the signal. So once I've shown you the basics of this DSA, we're going to have a look at it in context with this audio. Okay, going along, we have the suppressor. So this will control this bottom graph here. So the suppressor is what frequencies are being suppressed. And below here, we have the strength. So this is how much are they being suppressed by. Be careful not to do this too much because if you use too much de it might sound like the speaker has a bit of a lisp. You do want some S sounds, but obviously if it's too harsh, we will need to use a de -esser. Also, you can use a de before the compressor or after the compressor or both. I generally like to use a de before the compressor, but sometimes if it's a really S-y recording, I will use a de before and after the compressor. And going down here, we have smoothing. So this is how fast the de is going to come in and out. You don't want it too short because it will immediately take the S away, which can make the audio sound a little choppy. Also, you don't want this too slow or it might not react in time. So somewhere in the middle might be good. So I'd say a bit below 20, be fine. And then going down, we have monitor. But let's have a listen to the audio now. Let's first of all bypass this plugin, then we'll have a listen to the audio with the plugin enabled. So in this very first lecture, we're going to talk about probably the number one issue for so many of you. And then you can hear already it's quite S-y, so I'm going to enable this de -esser. So in this very first lecture, we're going to talk about probably the number one issue for so many of you. And that's you can see when the the ESA is working, the activity light is flashing. So in this very first lecture, we're going to talk about probably the number one issue for so many of you, and that's your email volume. If you work in a large corporation or heck, even a small corporation, you're probably getting a lot of email every day. And a lot of people even get hundreds of emails every day. And I see for a lot of corporate professionals, this is probably one of the biggest challenges. How do you man? I'd probably say about that's good for this voice. Now let's go over to monitor to check on this as well. And we have four different monitor modes. Off is what we're hearing right now. So this is the signal after it's been de -esced. And then we have detector. So detector will play you the detection of the frequency band. 
So let's have a listen to this. And we can go through this frequency dial here. And with this detector mode in monitor, we can really fine tune and find the band of frequency we want to DS. So in this very first lecture, we're going to talk. Obviously, if it's too low, it'll pick up the other frequencies of the voice. We just want the S's and the T's and the F's. So let's try and find that frequency here. I'd say probably about here, but let's have a listen. So in this very first lecture, we're going to talk about probably the number one issue for so many of you, and that's your email volume. If you work in a large corporation, or heck, even a small corporation, you're probably getting a lot of email every day. And a lot of people even get hundreds. That sounds about the right region. And we have other monitor modes as well. So suppressor will actually play just the suppressed band. So in this very first lecture, we're going to talk about probably the number one issue for so many of you, and that's your email volume. If you work in a large corporation. OK, and then sensitivity. So this is playing what's being cut out. So first lecture. Obviously. In the mix, we don't want any of these free monitor modes. We want it on off. But to find the right band of frequency or to find what you want to get suppressed or cut out, these monitor modes can be useful. So let's put this back to off. So in this very first lecture, we're going to talk about probably the number one issue for so many of you, and that's your email. I'm going to lower the sensitivity slightly because if we're DSing too much, it can sound like a bit of a lisp. So in this very first lecture, we're going to talk about probably the number one issue for so many of you, and that's your email. I think that's about right. Let's just disable this plugin and listen to it again. Enabled. So in this very first lecture, you can hear right at the start, there's quite a... So in this... Quite so when he says so in this very first lecture, he says the S is very harsh. So let's just have a listen to this with the DSA activated. So in this very first lecture, we're going to talk. Going to lower the sensitivity even more. So in this very. So I think for this voice, I've got the right settings. Obviously, for your own voice, it can be quite different. Or you mix it to someone else's voice, it can be different. For female voice as well, the frequencies may be a little higher. But yeah, this is basically how you use a DSA. It's quite easy to use, but it can make a big difference when mixing voice. So thank you for watching this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one.